Namaste and welcome to day 15 of 30 days of AppRite. Today we are going to learn all about AppRite database. Up until now we have looked into the AppRite's inbuilt features like authentication, user management, teams and roles. Apart from that any application that you build will require saving custom data. AppRite provides a database which you can use to save those data in the server and distribute it in your application with proper permissions and access. What is AppRite database? It's an easy to use API for restoring any custom data. It's built on top of MariaDB and more database engine supports are actively under development. You can check those in the GitHub repository. So AppRite database is designed as a document based NoSQL interface on top of MariaDB. The documents collections that are used to structure AppRite database can be managed right from the AppRite's console or any of AppRite's SDKs or even directly with REST API. First any database comes with its own technical terms or own jargons. So here is for AppRite database collection is it's just a group of documents. If you have worked with relational database, you can relate this to a table. A document is a structured object of key and values that belong to a particular collection. And in the relational database, this is similar to a row in a table. Rules, rules are the definitions for the attributes of the document. So each and every attribute is validated by a rule and this is similar to the table column in a relational database. Finally, AppRite database also has permissions for each of its resources and permissions are just an array of strings that define how or who can access the document and collections. Next, talking about rules, so text any string value numeric any integer or float value, boolean any boolean value, wildcard any value, url any valid url, email any valid email address, ip any valid ip. There is also one more rule that is embedded document. Next permissions. So permissions are just an array of strings and different string mean different permissions. So there is a wildcard asterisk. If you add asterisk as a permission, it's a public access. That means anyone can access it. If you add asterisk in read permission, that means anyone can read that particular resource. And if you add asterisk in write permission, that means anyone can write to that particular resource. Next, user colon user ID without any space. So if you specify permission as user colon user ID, this means that only the user with that particular ID will have access to that resource. Next, roles. These are the roles that are defined by AppRight. So role members means anyone who has successfully logged in or who has an active session can access and role guest means who doesn't have a session and role guest doesn't mean a public access. You should use wildcard asterisk for public access. Next teams. Team has few rules for permissions. First team colon team ID. So this permission means any member of the team can access that resource. Team colon team ID slash role means any member of the team with that particular role can access the resource and finally member colon member ID that means a particular member of a team can access that and here the member ID is actually the membership ID. While listing data from AppRite database, AppRite's SDK provide a method called list documents and using this method we can provide filters in order to filter the data set that we receive. So filters are just the array of strings and they are formatted as attribute operator value. Operator can be equal to not equal to greater than less than less than or equal to greater than or equal to. 
For example, if we have a database with database of books, we can filter like title equals the Hobbit. So this will only get the books with the title the Hobbit. And if we have a database of movies, for example, we can select or we can list documents with director not equal to Woody Allen. That means it will get all the movies where director is not equal to Woody Allen. So this is how we can filter documents. Now it's time for demo. We will use this knowledge to create a sample data structure in the AppRight console. For this, you should already have AppRight installed and you should create a project and log into the console. Select that project, go to the database tab. And once we are here, we can see that we have collections and right now we don't have any collection. So I can tap on add collection. So let's name this books create. Now we are taken to the settings for the collection. We have a collection ID and now we need to add rules or different attributes to our books. So our books will have title. The key is the actual field that we can use to filter or that we that is stored in the database. And rule type is text. That's fine. And once the rule is created, we can go here and make it required. So title is required. Next, we can add another. We can say author. Author. Again, title text. Again, let's make this required. Finally, we can add another. So here this was published. We can make it numeric create. Let's leave it as optional. Now we can assign permission in the collection as well. So let's add read access asterisk so that anyone can read this and write access. Let's say role member so that anyone with active session can write to this collection. Finally, let us hit update. Now our collection is created and if we go to documents tab, we don't have any documents in the collection right now, right? We can add simply new document and while adding the document, we can see that the attribute we have added, we can see it here. So title can be like collection documents can also have read and write permission. So if you do not provide anything here, it will not be accessible from client SDKs. So we should provide permission. So let us give read access to everyone and then write access again to member or here we can use like user ID, team ID or team role. So we can use this different kind of different types of permissions here and we can use multiple permissions to give access to multiple type of groups like we can give access to multiple teams or we can give access to a team and particular user those kind of stuff can be done and the permission handling of AppRite is quite advanced that is you can provide permission for each and every resource so each document can have its own permission each collection have its own permission. That way you have utmost control over your data regarding who can control it, who can access it, who can read, who can write. This is all about AppRights database. In the upcoming session, we'll use this knowledge in our application to allow our users to save some data in the server so that their data is not lost. Thank you everyone for watching this tutorial. See you again in the next episode.